We have to talk about the big news of the day. And I mean big news. A man in Australia believes he owns the largest steer in the country. So this is the herd. Wait for it. Look at this thing. We're going to see it in just a second. Oh, my goodness. Whoa. His name is Nickers. He is six feet, four inches tall and weighs almost 3,000 pounds. That's almost as tall as Michael Jordan and as heavy as a Mini Cooper. Sweet Jesus. <laughs> I know there's tons of news happening in the world right now. I know there's Trump. I know there's things in Brexit with Britain. I know, but look at that thing. <laughs> what is going on in Australia? Why is every animal down under so weird? <laughs> every animal, their ducks have fur. The kangaroos have a built-in tummy purse. Like, I feel like Australia's doping all their animals like they're Russian athletes. This is like some crazy guy in Australia's like, oh yeah, I'm finished with my super spiders. Now I'm like a cow the size of Michael Jordan. <laughs> what are you guys doing down there? And honestly, I like, that cow is so glorious, right? I bet it's so glorious that last night the Pope converted to Hinduism. He was like, you know what, they're right. Cows, man, I've been rolling with Jesus for too long. <laughs> Now, when I saw this giant cow, the first thing I thought was, this is some dope weed. <laughs> but a lot of other people saw that cow, and they took it to a really dark place. Oh, his massive size is also what saved him. Nickers is too big for the meat processing facility, so he will live out the rest of his life with his herd. He's too heavy for the abattoir, so he'll live out his days in the paddock. Unfortunately, some bad news if you like an extra big T-bone steak. Why are you trying to eat the giant cow? <laughs> the world only has one giant cow, and your only thought is, supersize me. <laughs> Just eat two normal cows. It tastes the same. Why are people trying to kill the cow? And you know what? Luckily, even if they want to, they can't kill him. He cannot fit inside the abattoir. Which, by the way, is such a white people problem to have. Because in Africa, they'll be like, no, we can, we can kill that cow. We can find a way. <laughs> Don't worry about the machine. We can't kill that cow. But luckily in Australia, they can't kill him. Yeah, so Nickers the cow can do whatever he wants. Like, what are you gonna do about it? He's unkillable. Yeah, like I'm hoping that one day the farmer's gonna come home, he's gonna find the cow sitting on his couch watching his TV with his arm around his wife, and the farmer's gonna be like, bloody hell, cow, what are you doing in my house? And the cow's gonna be like, look at me, look at me. I am the farmer now. While we've been going through this corona crisis in America, The Daily Show's Ronnie Chang has been stuck in Australia. There he is, Ronnie Chang. Hey, what's up, Trevor? Oh, man, so good to see you, dude. What's going on? Uh, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm okay. I'm, I was actually visiting Australia when all this went down. Uh, I came here to pe pet a koala bear, and uh, all this stuff started happening, so I'm stuck in a hotel room right now. And I spent like two thousand dollars on mini bar peanuts. Damn. Yeah, yeah. That's you got to be careful down there, man. There's a lot of corona cases down there. Uh, yeah, it's increasing just like everywhere. But uh, don't worry, I've I've been tested. Wait, are you being like, are you being serious? You've been tested, tested. Yeah, I got tested for the corona. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I just had I to. Can't, uh, I can't tell if you're being serious. Right? Did you really get tested? Yeah, I got tested. Yeah, I got oh, tested. Oh, okay. Like just just because you like because like you're on TV or just they they're just testing people. I I think that just I matched the symptoms because um I had a cough and I just came in from America and uh, wow. they gave, they gave me everything. They tested me. They gave me a pap smear. They gave me a pregnancy test. Uh, <laughs> I I had the whole uh, everything. I did every exam I could in that place. Wow. Okay. Well, that sounds unnecessary. I don't know why you did the pregnancy test. Oh, but you, you'll be glad to know that I'm not pregnant, by the way. Well, I mean, that, that's obvious. You were never going to be pregnant. I'm also not whatever the pap smear test. I'm not that either. I, I don't think it's testing for a thing to be. I think yeah. that... Well, look. A, a, anyway, anyway, I'm just, I'm just I'm saying... I'm perfectly healthy. The point is I'm perfectly healthy. Yeah, and the point is it seems like it's really easy to get tested in Australia, much easier than it is in America. Yeah, well... It, it's like it's impossible to get a test out here. Yeah, I'm hearing stories. Again, I haven't been in America for like four weeks now, but uh, if it makes you feel any better, the corona test doesn't feel great, okay? You, they, they stick that swab way up your nose. It touches the back of your back of your nasal passage. It's, it's like an anal probe on your nose, man. It's, it's not good. 
Wait, so they just like stick the thing up your nose. Oh, and they then... stick it up and then they yeah. twist it like that. Like they're digging your nose for you. Yeah, but not. It feels like uh, it feels like someone's trying to scratch your brain. Damn. Oh, that sucks. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry that you had to get the test. I'm also sorry that now you're stuck in a hotel social distancing. That must, like, be double oh, the pain. No, no, I'm, I'm fine, man. I love social distancing. I, I love, this is my jam. I love this stuff. I get to watch TV all day. I can eat whatever I want. I wake up whenever I want. I don't have to wear pants. I'm not wearing pants right now. It's, it's the best. Yeah, but what about all the people who love you? You don't get to see them. And those, those people are the worst, by the way. People who love you are the worst. Hugging and kissing and rubbing is every, every form of, of affection is like a corona bomb. No thanks. Wow. Okay. So if it was up to you, you'd just be interacting over like video calls and stuff. That, that would be your yes. life. Absolutely. In fact, I, when this thing is over, I hope this is the only way we interact. I mean, I don't have to smell your breath. You know, I, I don't have to... I don't have to like uh, be in contact with your bodily fluids. And if I get bored, I can just pretend I'm having problems with the Wi-Fi. Wow. Okay. I mean, that's one way to look at it. But then, like, what about like work and hanging out with your friends? You you always said you loved hanging having lunch with me every day. So I mean, yeah, that's, actually, that's sorry, Trevor. I'm sorry. The Wi-Fi in Australia is actually really really bad. So uh, I I I I can't hear you anymore. I'll I'll just talk to you later, man. See you later. Oh. Bye. Okay. Bye. In 2016, Trump got elected with only a quarter of eligible voters supporting him. That is a broken system. Some politics nerds are proposing a solution. Jury duty and taxes are mandatory, so why not voting? But America is the land of the free, where the whole point is to do anything you want, even dress up as fat Iron Man in Times Square on a Tuesday afternoon. So can you really force Americans to vote? Do you think in America voting should be compulsory? I think it should, but it's not going to happen because people won't even wear masks. If we were told to do something, at this point, exactly, f*** it, we wouldn't do it. Do you think America would ever accept mandatory voting? Definitely not. Why not? Because uh, Americans are lazy, in general. America is the land of the free. People come here because it's a free place. And that it, includes the freedom to not participate? It, uh, yeah, pretty much. Do you think mandatory voting can happen in America? No, <laughs> I do not. I do not. I think that American values are like a toxic version of what freedom is. Isn't that what makes America great? It's not so great at the moment. Maybe Americans think it's impossible, but mandatory voting does exist in 22 countries, including one that's even drunker, crazier, and whiter than the US. I'm talking about Australia, where they've had it since 1922. It was quite a small step for Australians to think, well, we want the majority of people to be selecting our government. And that gives it greater legitimacy. So basically in Australia, you force people to exercise their democratic rights. That's right. Yes, that's right. I don't think people in Australia regard it as a particularly big deal. You've got to turn up on election day, which is a Saturday. You know, it might take you like, 15 minutes and the Parents and Teachers Association will be there selling sausages and that's where we get the term democracy sausage. Okay, for Americans, the term democracy sausage has had a bad taste since the Clinton administration. But for Australians, consuming chard intestine meat on bread has been a voting tradition since the 1940s. But what about the people who don't think a sausage sizzle is enough incentive to vote? What kind of punishment do you have to enforce to make it so that over 90% of people go and vote? What, jail time? Public spanking? You have to wear an I didn't vote sticker? Uh, it's a $20 fine. That's it? That's a, that's a bargain, I think. Look, there's big advantages in our system because the political parties don't have to get the vote out. And that means they don't have to appeal to the base. So you don't get the same sort of extreme ideological um, appeals and so it makes our democracy, I think, more moderate. Doesn't that make the, your election process very boring? Oh, well, I, I it doesn't make it boring. Look, I don't know that that's a problem. For me, what democracy means is that the majority of people participate. And I find the extent of voter suppression in the United States truly shocking. I don't understand how the Americans can call themselves dem a democracy at all. Damn, political science world star is gonna love this. But how do everyday Australians see it? I took a 25 hour flight and spent two weeks in quarantine just so I could talk to them myself in sunny Brisbane, Australia. 
What do you feel about the fact that voting is compulsory in Australia? I feel very proud that it is, and for people who don't want to vote, they should go and live somewhere else. Everybody has to decide, and they, uh, it's mandatory to vote, so if the result doesn't go your way, you can't complain. If we lose, oh, we're sad, but at least we've had a chance to vote. And that's it, brother. Done. You should just do it. It takes five minutes. You just go in there, vote, and get out. No time, no effort. Yeah. Just shut the f up and vote. Well, what do you guys think about mandatory voting in Australia? Nah. Um, I think it's pretty bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm not a fan of it. We don't care what we vote for, so we just go in there, tick a few boxes, and then fingers crossed we get the right one. I don't yeah. know. Are you guys drunk right now? Yeah, we had yeah, a few had beers before, a couple of yeah, shots. So, beer, beer, yeah, yeah. beer with brekkie, you know. Man, that is <laughs> Australian. But why, why do you think voting isn't mandatory in America? Oh, maybe, I mean. Yeah, now I rethink it, actually. Maybe there's a purpose for it. America, Australia, which one's doing better? <laughs> I feel like I'm a witness to cavemen discovering fire right now. Yeah, that's fair yeah, enough, actually, yeah. Even drunk Australian bros can see the benefits of mandatory voting. But for America, the good news is that voter turnout in 2020 is on track to hit record levels. All we needed to get people to vote was to elect Donald Trump. And then guess what? People turn up. We don't need to force people to vote. Well, that's a pretty big price to pay. I'd rather pay a $20 fine than have to put up with President Trump for four years. Touche, Judith. But hopefully one day, Americans will also learn to enjoy the sweet, sweet taste of democracy sausage as much as our drunk, vote-loving mates down under. Thank you. I know what you're thinking. How did my incredibly chiseled body end up here? Enjoy your drugs. Next. Pick up for Ronnie Chang. Right. 25 milligram Daraprin for toxoplasmosis. Yup. I got it for my cat. I got it for my cat. It's not like you have to do anything weird to get it. Okay, you just need to have touched cat feces and not wash your hands and then put it in your mouth, which happens more than you think, okay? Okay, so that'll be $45,909.10. Wait, did you say $45,909.10? How is that even possible? How did this medicine become so expensive? I went home to do some research. Yes, this is how I do research. It's the future, okay? Deal with it. One tablet of Daraprim used to cost $13.50. The drug maker recently increased the price to $750. Apparently in America, drug companies can do whatever the hell they want. And that's exactly what this asshole did. Remember Martin Shkreli? He was the one who raised the price of the life-saving drug Daraprim. In response to all of this attention, are you going to change the price? No. I also found out that a group in Australia managed to replicate the same drug for just two bucks a pill. At that price, it's cheaper for me to fly to Australia than to buy it in America. So I did. And guess what? The scientists responsible were... These high school nerds! Meet the young chemist from Sydney Grammar's All Boys High School. Man, I, I love it. All that time you could have wasted going on dates and having a life, you guys channeled into your science. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. What we're trying to do is just to demonstrate that this drug doesn't deserve to be price hiked to $750 a pill. I think like people appreciate and notice a bit more now. Except for one guy who went on a tweeting rampage against them when their success started to make headlines. Never ever compare your cook game to mine. Highest yield. Best purity, most scale, I have the synthesis game on lock. We were able to do this in a school lab with cheap school equipment compared to a fully fledged facility that he has. And we compared the spectroscopy, and we got very high yield, very high purity. So our synthesis game is also on lock, Shkreli. Oh snap, <laughs> they talk science and trash. And at just two bucks a pill, they must be balling. So how did you guys celebrate your newfound wealth? We didn't make money from it. We're just making it to prove a point, really. Hang on, wait a second. So you created a drug and you made no money from it? No, no. What are they teaching you at this school? Science. Well, maybe they should be teaching some basic economics. Where's this magic stuff you made? There it is. Wonderful little beautiful white powder. That's it? Yep, that's it. And how much is that worth? It's about worth a uh, bit over $100,000. The street In value of that is $100,000? In the US, yeah. Can you show me how to make it? 
So we started out with chlorophenyl acetonitrile, to which we added ethyl propanoate and potassium tert-butoxide to get the keto nitrile. Then we added isobutanol in concentrated sulfuric acid to get the butyl ether. Then we added guanidine hydrochloride and sodium Clearly methoxide. these kids were only in it for the science and not working on their own. So I arranged to sit down with the real mastermind behind this operation, the hardened criminal that was profiting off of these students. Uh, Ronnie? So the drug lords were actually the scientists working for the open source malaria cartel and they were cracking the code behind dozens of drugs including Daraprim. The aim is to try and make medicines more accessible to people. It only takes a few steps and high school students can do it. So why is it so expensive? Why is it so expensive? Well, Shkreli bought the marketing rights. It's because of a loophole in the States. This loophole allows this company to charge whatever it likes for this drug. Isn't that a good thing? They can put that money into making the drug itself better. Well, there's been no development on this medicine for over 60 years. I mean, it's off patent. It was invented in the 50s. So there seems to be no reason to raise the price of a drug by over five and a half thousand percent. But you guys are sitting on a gold mine here. I think you've really misunderstood what's going on here. I'm not saying sell it for 750 a pill. Okay, we're not animals. Like 500 a pill. But we don't want to. But you could. But. We but don't no. want it. For a bunch of geniuses, they sure don't know anything about supply and demand. Luckily, I too know smart stuff, which takes us back to where we were. I needed a large supply of pharmaceuticals to bring back to the States. To make a million, I mean save millions of lives. And I knew just the people to make it happen. All right, listen, you Australian genius brats. I need drugs, lots of drugs. Keep mixing that, go. Why are you in underwear? Look, I don't know much about chemistry, but I know you gotta take your pants off when you do it, okay? That's basic science. What is this? That's a great B. But I need a great A, you hear me? I want your synthesis game on lock. If you got something for herpes, I want that. You don't have to do it right now, just write that down for me. I'll take it home and figure it out. Science, bitch! Now that I have my product... Keep working! All I had to do was smuggle it into America and I had a foolproof plan. Okay, so you take this, right, and you put it in your pocket. Turns out the best drug mules aren't even mules. Right, that's it. Go, go and save lives, you beautiful medical marsupials. If you make it to America, meet me in Times Square. Now, do any of you fucking kangaroos know I can get an Uber? Let's talk about animals. They can sit up, they can roll over, and some of them can even sing like Beyonce. <laughs> But when animals pop up in the news, oftentimes it's because they've done something bad. So to help us cover the biggest animal stories, we turn to our very own Daily Show animal expert, my Australian cousin, with the segment he calls, F These Animals. <laughs> oh, hi, mates. Welcome to the show. I'm Australian Trevor. And you can tell that I'm Australian, because I have a hat. <laughs> As a wildlife expert, I love animals. But the truth is, some of them are downright dicks. <laughs> animals like this kangaroo. Look at this creature. Half rabbit, half fanny pack, and 100% wanker. And a paraglider gets a rude awakening, get it? While landing in Australia. Take a look. What's up, Skip? Hey, <laughs> Go away. A go away, a GoPro cam catching the moment the angry kangaroo charges at the man. Thankfully, it hopped away seconds later, leaving the man with barely a scratch. Jumping jaguars at a jamboree. <laughs> this bloke was just peacefully paragliding, and then this hopping hooligan comes at him like he's Liam Neeson, and this guy took his kid. <laughs> this kangaroo has a particular set of skills, being a dick. That's probably why this kangaroo got fired from the job at the airport. He kept fighting the planes every time they tried to land. <laughs> and if it's not asshole kangaroos punching paragliders, it's criminal bears grabbing your garbage. A bear's attempt at dumpster diving ended in furry frustration. It walked up to a Colorado marijuana dispensary looking for some munchies. The bear broke through a fence and started sniffing around. It tried to get into that dumpster, but the dumpster was a bear-resistant container. The bear decided, right there, to roll it down the street before eventually giving up. What? Whopping wallabies at a Walmart. 
This bear's stealing a dumpster from a marijuana dispensary. That's not only criminal, it's bloody dumb. Anyone with half a brain knows that pot smokers never leave food behind. <laughs> There's no food in there, mate. This would be like searching for porn mags at Mike Pence's house. Yeah, he doesn't read porn. He gets off to the LL Bean Winter Catalog. <laughs> ah, look at that insulation. But at least that bear had the decency to do this crazy shit at night. Animals in Africa have the unneuded balls to terrorize you during the bloody day. What would you do if an angry elephant charged your Jeep during a safari? This was the scene when a raging elephant charged a safari tour Jeep. The stunning video was taken by a tourist sitting at the back of the safari's Jeep. The driver desperately tried to reverse away from the charging animal, as you can obviously see here. Jumping Jeffrey Epstein on a pogo stick. That crazy elephant needs to calm down. Was he chasing them? All these nice people wanted to do was barge into his home and snap photos of him while he's taking a bath. <laughs> What's the big deal? If anyone wants to watch me show, they're welcome. That's why I set up a webcam. <laughs> and also, what's with the bloke who's live streaming the whole thing? Instead of, instead of trying to get followers, mate, you should be calling your mom goodbye. Yeah, busy out there. You gotta pay attention, elephants, or you'll end up with a tusk so far up your bum it becomes an extra tooth, mate. <laughs> but let me tell you, these safari goers got off with just a scare. In Yellowstone National Park, there's a bison that got a lot closer, and luckily, no one was badly hurt. A harrowing experience of a nine-year-old Florida girl who's recovering tonight after being attacked by a bison at Yellowstone National Park. What started as a family's awe-inspiring encounter turned to horror. A crowd of curious tours getting a close look at a massive bull bison. Then suddenly, it charges, plowing into a nine-year-old girl, launching her several feet into the air. The girl rushed to a nearby clinic. Rangers say the child is lucky she was not seriously injured. Did you ring dingoes? That bison is a downright prick. How are you gonna go flip a poor little girl, you bison? You should be going after her coward parents. Look at them. They ran away faster than a cheetah laid on his child support. Yeah, I'll tell you what, mate. After that, you're never getting any respect from your kid. Yeah, tomorrow night, that mum will be like, Katie, you left the dishes in the sink. And she'll be like, oh, kind of like how you left me for dead while that bison used me as a goddamn hacky sack. F you, mum, and f these animals. That's all the time we got for today. Um, excuse me, I've got to go investigate a dangerous one who's running a Ponzi scheme. Back to you, Trevor. Thanks, Australia, Trevor.